Good morning students. Welcome to the history class. Today you are going to learn another social reformer that is Jyotiba Phule. Jyotiba Phule was born in a low caste family in Maharashtra. But he was highly educated and he was critical of Hindu religion and customs. He wanted to uplift the conditions of women. He considered women superior to men in status and he wanted to give education to women. For this purpose, he established along with his wife, Savitri Phule, the first girls school in Pune and he also opened orphanage for the widows and he also wanted for the right of the widows remarriage and in his book Gulagiri he also explained the hardship as well as the distress felt by the so called depressed class because everywhere they were denied access and opportunities and kept away from the mainstreams of life as he was a member of such a low caste family he experienced a lot that is why he very vividly explained this matters in his book Gulandri and he uh, also founded an organization known as Satya Shodak Samaj in 1873 in order to give social justice to the weaker sections of the society. The next topic that I am going to explain to you is the contribution of the socio-religious movement to the national movement. Means in what are the ways the socio-religious movement launched in the 19th century helped the national movement of the country. There are many points are there. Let us see these points one by one. The first is that Sami Dayanat and Sami Vivekananda proclaimed the superiority of Indian culture and civilization. They said to the people that India had a glorious past and we were in no way inferior to the Europeans. We, we are superior to them in culture and civilization. And the second point is that reformers contemplated untouchability and caste system. The social reformers gave importance to remove the, the untouchability and the caste system existed in the society. They knew that this is a great obstacle for the development of the society and the, uh, and the country. So that is why they wanted to eradicate the social evils as well as the caste system prevailing in the society. And another point is that reformers highlighted the role of women in the national movement. And they also uh, told the people that women also play a vital role in the, uh, in the national movement. So in no way underestimate the role of women in the national movement. They can also contribute a lot to the national movement. And another point is that Sami Dhananda Sarasri first used the words of Suraj and the India for Indians. Means it was Sami Dhananda Sarasri also uh, first used the word Suraj and India for Indians. And uh, the social reformers also dreamed a society free from the caste and uh, social evils. 
then only a society can prosper and develop so these are the uh, main contribution of the socio religious reform movement to the nationalist movement see the other factor which contributed to the growth of nationalism in india and this factor is the role of press press means newspapers newspapers play a vital role in forming the ideas and opinions among the people of the country in the 19th century a large number of newspapers were brought out here uh, so many uh, newspapers are here uh, i have written the name of a few so here the newspapers are amar basa patriya the bengal the tribune the pioneer the times of india and the hindu so this are the name of the few newspapers which were published during the time and this uh, newspapers also spread the ideas of patriotism liberty equality brotherhood brotherhood means uh, it, it was during the french revolution the ideas of liberty and equality were raised and this ideas and the thought brought it to india by the newspapers and another uh, role played by the newspaper is that they criticize the unjust rule of the british means how did the british miss rule the country and exploited the people all these things were brought into the people by the work of the newspaper and another is the exchange of ideas we know that the social groups are staying in different parts of the country and they cannot exchange the ideas and their opinions without a media like the newspaper so it was through the newspaper uh, the social group contacted one another and exchanged their ideas and new views and another point is that loss of the trust of the world means what is happening elsewhere in the other part of the world uh, people came to know through the newspaper so this was only the communication in those times and the people also uh, came to know uh, that there were also uh, revolutions taking place in other countries all these things came to the people or brought it to the people by the newspapers so the, uh, the newspaper uh, played a very important role for the growth of nationalism in the country see now i am going to explain the pre cuts of the indian national movement what is meant by pre cuts pre cuts means four runners means before the indian national congress was formed which are the organizations formed here so there were three organizations are there before the indian national congress and this are the first one is known as east india association this was formed by dada bhai navroz who is known as the grand old man of india and it was formed by him in london but this is first to be east india association he is uh, omitted from the syllabus uh, by the council for 2022 examination so you need not need not to study this and another association is known as indian association in 1876 this association was uh, formed by surendra nath banerjee but this is also cancelled from the syllabus by the board and the third association indian national conference in 1883 so this is very important and you got to study this uh, questions will come definitely so let us say that the formed this association the indian national conference was formed by surendra nath banerjee in bengal and this was a provincial uh, association and uh, actually this association offered a model for the working of the indian national congress and uh, uh, this uh, associations and the indian national congress ideas were same that is why the indian national conference merged with the indian national congress in 1886 so this are the uh, 
points with regard to the Indian uh, with regard to the Indian National Conference formed by the Surendra Banerjee. The next time I am going to explain another very important organization that is known as Formation of the Indian National Congress. This organization was founded by AOQ. He was a retired member of the British Indian Civil Service. AOQ wanted to have an organization that can point out the lapses or the drawback of the British rule and suggest remedial measures. So that was the aim of forming this organization. And in this regard, he also wrote a letter to the graduate of Kolkata University. And he also consulted with other leaders in India. And in 1884, he formed an organization that is known as Indian National Union. So this was the first name of Indian National Congress. And later, a conference was conveyed in 1885 at Pune. But due to the plague broke out there, the conference was not held there. And its value was shifted from Pune to Mumbai. And the first meeting of Indian National Congress was held at Google and Tejpal Sanskrit College at Mumbai. From all over India, 72 delegates attended this. Delegates means representatives. And this meeting was held under the presidentship of W.C. Banerjee. And it was like this meeting, Dharavai Navroji, changed the name from Indian National Union to Indian National Congress. Thus, Indian National Congress came into uh, form on 28th December 1885. The formation of Indian National Congress was welcomed by Lord Dufferin, the Viceroy of India, and he named this as a safety wall for the public discontent. Safety wall means what he means is that if Indians cause any problems with the British rule in India, they can discuss this matter very peacefully with the British rulers and he can easily solve this matter. So that was the uh, what he means. But later this organization changed its policies and worked for the freedom of the country. Now I am going to explain about the aims and objectives of the Indian National Congress. Here I have written out the points that you can see. The first is that to promote a friendly relations with other nationalist political workers of the country. Because a friendly relation is necessary. That was the first thing. And the second is that a consolidated national unit irrespective of caste and religion. Because India at that time was uh, uh, affected by caste and religion. So that, that is why national unity was not possible. So uh, irrespective of caste and religion, people should uh, unite for the unity of the nation. That is the second aim. And the other is that the present public demand before the government means the public demand they are to present before the government. And finally that to train and for public opinion in the country. So this was the final point. So these are the main objectives and aim of Indian National Congress in order to the freedom of the country in the very beginning. See now let us go through the different sessions of the Congress. Uh, here the first session of the Congress was held in Mumbai under the presidentship of W.C. Banerjee that I have told you. And uh, the second session of the Congress was held in 1886 in Kolkata. That was under the presidentship of Dadabai Navroji. And at this time, its members also increased to thousands. And uh, at the second session of the Congress, Lord Dufferin came in the as distinguished visitors to the capital. 
so here you are know that the british welcomed the formation of international congress and they were the most distinguished visitors distinguished visitors means consider them as a very important visitors to the capital because at that time the aim of the congress was to you know freedom but only to uh, point out the lapse of the british rule and to suggest remedial measures so that is why the viceroy considered them as very important guests uh, but gradually the congress failed and uh, the congress changed its policies then it became a enemy of the british and uh, in sore the session of the international congress so that is the 23rd session was held in 1907 at this uh, conference the congress was split into two uh, for the the assertive group as well as uh, the nationalist so with this today's class has been completed and i will come with another video next class thank you